Greetings everyone and welcome back to Ji Senju no Mao. Let's continue. By the way, did I already mention that I like how the game changes the cursor from an arrow into a little violin? That's kinda cute. Anyway, break time. I was called to the faculty office. While I'm at school I try to avoid attracting attention or provoking the judgement of my peers. Of course, that involves a bit of effort outside everyone's line of sight. But due to my frequent skipping, I'm occasionally called out by the teacher. I didn't bother putting effort into the pop quiz yesterday, so now my math teacher is out for blood. He's got that passion for education thing going on. Oi, Azai, Sensei, wa na, omae wa motto dekiru n janai ka to omotte rin da. No, I tried pretty pr pretty hard. Kino no testo ni shite mo sou da. Omae wa za to kotae wo machigaite nai ka? Why would he do that? Of course not. There was a worksheet laying on the teacher's messy desk. He tapped his finger over the logistic curve on the paper. What? Right now? Looks like neglecting the quiz was a bad call. Alright, I'll do it. I held the pencil and gazed at the questions. Um, this here goes like this. The teacher was staring at me like a hawk, observing my every move. Don't stare at me like... Ah! Oh, the lead snapped. Well, just look, the desk is a little bumpy, don't you think? If one were to look closely, one would notice the many small holes on the desk along with countless scratches. Oh, come on, it's just a desk. Trying to write on this thing messed up the characters. And look right here, it even made me tear a hole in the paper. Ah, break time's over. Even then the math teacher wouldn't let me go. Then again, it wasn't all that bad. Compared to my job, school's heaven. After school was over, I crept over to the lab equipment storage room. It's usually locked. But a teacher let me borrow the key once and I secretly made a duplicate. This is Aegis and my territory. Let the secret club activities begin. Eiji was in the hall, waiting for permission to enter the room. Bees. Babies. Rabies. Wannabes. And thus the password check was complete. Very well, you may enter. Holy shit! Yes, it's been half a year. How rude! My time is infinite and therefore my concept of time isn't as specific as yours. Why is he calling him God? Eiichi knelt in front of me. Yeah, I agree. Silence, mortal! You're the one that made me wear this in the first place. If you feign ignorance, God will become wrathful. Yes, the fact that you can enjoy this existence is all thanks to me. Yes. I'm glad you understand. Because you're an asshole. That's your problem. Sure, let's hear it. There's nothing I can't do. A.G. lowered his head. Hmm, how tragic. It is simply human nature that one cannot avoid hating another. Oh, that's truly unforgivable. No problem. What's her name? Who? Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, but this is completely different. Hold it right there. Oh, come on, you're projecting here. Besides, Canon is my... 
神は神でしょ唯一人でしょ妹とかいるわけないでしょ Looks like he's going to get his revenge one way or the other. Cool down. Canon may be a spoiled brat, but she's not a bad person.、Uh, Don't eh me.、Uh, Don't ah me either. What are you, an infant? I already know what you're really like. No. Alright, meeting adjourned. God has better things to do. After putting the cone hat on the rack in my makeshift dressing room, I walked out into the hall. Revenge isn't a good thing. Eiji looked like he wanted to spit on the floor. If it's a girl you want, I can always introduce you to another one. Oh, please, that's utterly impossible. No, it wouldn't be that impossible. The only problem would be that I'd have to use my other, non student persona to introduce him to such a woman. Ah, about that. Not this time, I promised I'd meet up with Itsubaki. We're going to buy CDs together. We were together yesterday, too, you know. This could be the start of a brand new love. Come on, a promise is a promise. That's actually rather satisfying. <laughs> See you tomorrow. It seems that the school's opinion of me meets my expectations. If I maintain this lie, others will begin to see it as the truth. When I came upon Central Boulevard, the streets were already illuminated by the endless rows of neon lights. It would appear that I'm a bit late. Pushing back the suffocating crowd, I walked toward the cafe Lapis Lazuli. The waiter greeted me with a single finger raised. No, someone was waiting for me. As I glanced around the cafe, I realized that I couldn't find Tsubaki. Excuse me, did a girl wearing the G Yuga Saki uniform stop by? The waiter tilted his head a bit. She carries a diary around everywhere. Oh, hi, hi. You're not sure what Did she already leave? Don't say no, I'm not sure what you're doing. I'm not sure what you're doing. I'm not sure what you're doing. A man? What? Don't tell me. What was the man like? Yep, a con artist. He probably saw Tsubaki as an easy target. Generally, con artists won't immediately bring their prey into their office. Instead,、uh, they'll talk with girls in some place with a nice atmosphere, like this cafe, trying to measure them up. Jesus, that naive girl. At the best, he wants her to work at his hostess bar. At worst, he'll want her in a porno. Well, we definitely can't have that. Even though I had just arrived, I immediately left. There are four operational talent agencies of varying sizes along Central Boulevard. All of them are under the protection of Azai Gonzo's organization. Of course, they all know what the Azai Corporation is. Even though I didn't want to resort to this, I really have no choice. I dialed on my cell. This is a call from the Azai Corporation. Has your agency been in contact with a girl named Tsubaki in the past few hours? She'd be wearing a Jiyuga Saki uniform. In our past.、Uh, Tsubaki walked down the dark stairs of the building.、Uh, I finally found you. It's nearly impossible when you don't carry a cell. Despite being picked up by a con artist, she doesn't seem to be in any bad shape. What happened? I pretended to not know anything. Wow, not bad. You are pretty cute. That smile almost ended up in a dirty magazine. But you promised you'd meet me at the coffee shop. You shouldn't just go off with strangers. Oh, 
カザイくんに連絡して相談しようと思ってたんだよでもセントラル街って公衆電話が全然ないんだねそしたらその人が事務所に来てくれれば電話を貸してくれるって Seriously? This girl has absolutely no sense of danger or suspicion So, what about the photographs? うんうん、一枚もなんだか急に帰っていいって言われて丁寧に出口まで見送ってもらったよ Of course, that bastard would be respectful after hearing the Azai family name 私、審査落ちしちゃったみたいだね At that, I could only crack a wry smile Eh,、uh, forget about it. It's no big deal. Let's go get that Bach CD. Ah, oh, After we bought everything, we casually strolled along the streets. Azai kun, do you stay in my own as a CD? Cotta no? Hehehe, you don't know? Eh, Nanda ka wakara no ikedo. I explained as I looked at the two CDs. The first is for my collection. I'm never going to open it. Room decoration only. Well, those are some of his most famous pieces. This CD is centered around、uh, Chacon. Chacon? To be specific, it's the. Partita number one in D minor. It's played exclusively by violence, so it's very hard to put together. There are many versions of this、uh, Chacon.、Uh, the most famous is probably the one by Busoni, but personally, I'm not too hot on that one. Although, while Bach's、uh, polyphonic compositions are excellent, of course, I do think that some of his works that hold back a bit or rein in their complexity and difficulty are pieces much like air and fugue that allow the audience to enjoy the beauty of their melodies have a charm of their own. The French suits are an astounding example of this. If we wanted to top performers, Leonhard plays the best、uh, harpsichord on those pieces, but you would have to give me a little more time to think when it comes to the piano. Even though I've said this much, please don't think of me as a diehard fan. I still don't really understand the appeal of his church cantata ass, for example. In the end, what sets Bach apart from the rest is. We arrived at the station before we knew it. Oh crap, I promised Kanon that I'd come watch her this evening. Skipping out twice in a row would drive her nuts. Nah, don't worry about it. Just a second, I need to take this. I grabbed my phone. Hey! Oh, Miki chan, what's up? Oh, yeah, right. Really? Well, let's grab some dinner next time, okay? Yes, yes. See ya. It was nothing important. Sorry, Tsubaki, I have to go now. Tsubaki was forcing her lips shut, swallowing her tension. What? Yeah? CD. Sure, no problem. I'll give it to you a couple days from now after I finish listening to it. Was that really it? It seems that she's still hiding something. Oh well, who cares? After saying goodbye, I left for the skating rink. It was two stations from Central Boulevard by train. The skating arena is right smack in the middle of the central district and is a complex building indeed. Inside are not only regular ice rings, but also specialized ones for ice hockey and figure skating. Not to mention the fact that they keep it open year round. With the amount of media attention Kanon has been receiving recently, it's not surprising that Toman Betsu City is going all out with its sports facilities. It was 6 30 already. It's almost time to clear out the regular customers and make the complex into a facility solely dedicated to reserved practice time. I got in after explaining to security that I was a relative of Canon.
Of course, joining these athletes on the ice during their rigorous training is strictly forbidden. I sat in the stands and silently observed the practice. A happy, carefree voice came from the direction of the rink. I couldn't see her coach anywhere, so it was probably break time. Kanon gracefully glided around a track, not even wearing a coat. Hey, what are you playing? Compulsory figures is an event where an athlete has to edge a pattern onto the ice. Although, since it was unsuitable for a TV broadcast, the event has been excluded from most competitions. Conan was on one leg going in a circle. Occasionally, she would change the direction of the curve, slowly tracing out a symbol on the ice. Due to its slow nature, it doesn't look all that fancy. I'm getting bored here, but for Conan, it's an important test of her skills. Alrighty. To keep on practicing even during break. Impressive. Kanon <laughs> faced me while skating backwards. The skates traced out two parallel curves with complete ease. Wow, have you gotten better or something? I gave her an obligatory compliment. <laughs> Pivoting of that motion, she began to spin. But it would appear that she didn't generate enough momentum and she suddenly stopped shortly thereafter. Wow, that looked really good or something. <laughs> Well, I'm not a judge or anything, so I really don't know. Still, it seems like you've lost some weight. Height 5.3, body shape well proportioned. However, it was her long limbs that really gave her the edge in figure skating. When she tried executing a second jump, she lost her balance. Hey, no, don't get too cocky and enjoy yourself. And she chatted as she came over to the seats. Aren't you cold? That thing you're wearing, is that your competition costume? Is it okay to be wearing that right now? In a month and a half, Kanon will be entering a competition that is used to select Olympic participants. She held out her arms and tucked me tightly. Hey, watch it! Look at your feet! Those razor sharp blades almost cut my toes off. Toes. <laughs> this girl has a weird sense of humor. Oh, yeah, where's Mama? She's really busy, huh? I wanted to say hi at least. What direction do you want to go in? She's a simple one, isn't she? Plan? Great, what comes next? That's a vague plan, but that's so like you. I'm sure you'll be fine. Kanon returned to the skating rink once again, smiling all the while. Oh, you mean the loop? Quad jump refers to the quadruple Lutz, an extremely difficult jump that has never been successfully performed in any public women's competition around the world. The jumping itself is easy, landing the damn thing is the hard part. Hey, don't try it if you can't do it. It hurts when you fall, doesn't it? That only works if you succeed. Kanon started skating again, full of momentum. Hmm? Wait, I'm getting a call. It's probably Mickey-chan again. Jeez, there's a limit on how much you can disrupt my life, you know? Hello? However, when I hear the voice coming through the receiver, I couldn't help but hold my breath. Kanon was nowhere near my radar. 
After the call disconnected, I said one thing to her. Sorry, something came up. Kanon stomped her feet and the sound of crushed ice reached my ears. My mindset has already changed. My carefree time in the surface world was already over. Because that call was from Azai Gonzo, summoning me to his quarters. Well then, I guess next time we'll meet Azai Gonzo. So thanks for watching, and until then, bye bye.